Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce the natural logarithm, evaluate natural logarithms with your calculator, talk a little bit about the properties of natural logarithms, and then we'll find the domains of some natural logarithmic functions. The natural logarithm is log but with a base of e. Now remember that e is that fundamental number in our universe, like pi, it's that irrational number. Okay, we went through those properties of e earlier and what e is used for. So the natural log is really log base e. Okay, so when you see natural log, you gotta think log with a base of e, not log base 10 or log base two, but log base e. And the natural log of e is one. So you'll want to memorize that and recognize that. But really, when we say the natural log of e is one, what we're saying is log base e of e is one. In other words, what's the exponent on e that gets an answer of e? So remember, natural log is log base e. So, so using our calculator, we can find the natural log of 192.7, 10.84, and 0.5841, and we'll give negative one a shot as well, see if we can find the natural log of negative one. So there is a natural log key on your calculator, the ln key is that natural log, even though it's uh, uppercase. So the natural log of 192.7, we just put that in our calculator. You don't have to close the parentheses and we get 5.26 and change. The natural log of 10.84, so is just 2.38, about half, which is interesting that the, the exponent is about half. And the natural log of 0 0.5841, is negative, so we can get a negative answer here, which does make sense, because that's a, that's a fraction less than one, so um, that would make sense there. And then finally, let's see if we can take the natural log of negative one. And that gives us a non-real answer. So we can't uh, take the natural log of a negative number, but that makes sense. We couldn't take the log of a negative number either. So, um, and since the natural log is just log base e, uh, that totally makes sense. Let's move on to objective three and talk a little bit about the properties of natural logarithms. The natural log of one equals zero, because remember natural log is log base e of one. So we're saying what's the exponent on e that gets an answer of one? Well, that is zero, e to the zero is one. The natural log of e equals one, I asked you to memorize that, because e to the one is e, that's log base e of e. What's the exponent on base e that gives an answer of e? Well, when your base and your answer are the same, your exponent is one. The third one, the natural log of e raised to the x power equals x, and e to the natural log of x is also equal to x. Those are inverse properties there. If we converted between exponential and logarithmic forms, we would see that those work out pretty easily. And just like logarithms, if the natural log of x equals the natural log of y, then x and y have to have equivalent values. That's our one-to-one -one property. And moving on to our second sample here, use the properties of natural logarithms to rewrite each expression. So the natural log of one over e, well, one over e, e is in the denominator, that's the same thing as the natural log of e to the negative one. So that is negative one using our inverse property. In B, E raised to the natural log of five is five. Again, that inverse property that we saw a moment ago. C, four times the natural log of one 
Well, the natural log of 1 is 0, so this is simply 4 times 0, which we've got down here, which is 0. And then 2 times the natural log of e, the natural log of e is 1, so this is simply 2 times 1, which is 2. So we could do some other sample problems, the natural log of e to the 1 3rd using our properties was simply that's going to be 1 3rd. 5 times the natural log of 1, remember the natural log of 1 is 0, so that's 5 times 0, so that's 0. 3 fourths times the natural log of e, well the natural log of e is 1, so we get 3 fourths times 1, or 3 fourths. And e raised to the natural log of 7, that's an exponential form, I could move this into logarithmic form, log base e of some particular number equals log base answer equals our exponent, which is the natural log of 7. Log base e, well that's natural log. So that just becomes a natural log of some question mark equals the natural log of 7. So our question mark must be 7. And finally, in objective four, we want to find the domain of each of these particular functions. So our function f of x, the natural log of x minus two. Now remember, we can only take the natural log of a positive number. So this whole x minus two has got to be positive. So as is explained to us here, x minus two has got to be greater than or equal to zero, right? These values must be positive positive numbers are greater than or equal to zero. That's why we get x has got to be greater than two using our interval notation. X values can be anywhere from two to infinity, but not inclusive, not including two. And then we've got a graphical solution showing that. This really is a shift of two units to the right of our natural log function, and our vertical asymptote moves from zero to two. In B, the natural log of two minus x, well, again, the natural log here, this must be positive. So two minus x has got to be greater than zero. So we get x has got to be less than two in interval notation from negative infinity to two. And here's our graph of our function if we would have done that graphically. And then in C, finally in C, the natural log of x squared. Now remember, this must be positive, but since we're squaring x, squaring our input, we can have negative inputs here because we're gonna square it and it's gonna become positive. But you can't have zero. So this domain is gonna be all real numbers except zero. And here's the graph of the natural log of x squared. You can see we've got a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero. So that concludes our introduction to the natural logarithm. We've satisfied all our objectives and we'll practice more of this when I see you in class.